Hello. Hello. How are y'all? We are going to be playing Beacon Pines today on this Christmas Eve. P people in the peanut gallery want to wave? Hi. Okay. <laughs> And before we start, we have to say hello to the bots. They have been my uh, most loyalist of viewers. Who we got today? So, as always, Stream Elements been with me since the beginning. Looks like I've got Rogue Girl still hanging out, Commander Root, another TTV viewer. Alien Gathering. That one seems new. And one I cannot pronounce. Oh, are you <laughs> bot or lurker? Mm -mm -mm. Wow. Uh, that one. Yeah. Good to see you, everybody. All right, so let's get back to Beacon Pines. I keep feeling like we're almost done with this, and then it just keeps going. So let's see what we can come up with. Hmm. Sly cop. Vader run the classic. Good cop. Sly cop interrogation. Luca and Rollo ducked behind a barrel, leaving Beck to her task. With a few crisp snaps, she roused Mr. Tolliver. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, 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 uh. Tolliver looked down and shifted a bit, testing his restraints. <laughs> Beck caught herself before letting the surprise manifest on her face. his relation to Grand. This was going to be easy. Mr. Tolliver wriggled a bit in his restraints. Beck quickly removed the ropes. Tolliver rubbed the growing knot on his forehead. Uh, uh. Beck twirled her hand, as if to prompt <clears throat> Mr. Tolliver to finish her thought. Uh, uh, uh. Beck shook her head and clicked her tongue. Mr. Tolliver let out an amused huff in agreement. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, uh. 
Beck was on a roll now, playing Mr. Tolliver like a fiddle. Heading for the stairs, Mr. Tolliver hesitated and turned to Beck with a puzzled look. She grinned and gave him a peppy wave. With a shrug, he continued up the <coughs> stairs, whistling a jaunty tune. Slowly in disappointment. <laughs> she turned to the table and began tearing small scraps of paper. marked each scrap of paper and leaned back. Luca and Beck looked at Rolo with amazement. was long and uninspiring. A sort of natural barrier for the impatient. Oh.
Okay. stood proudly at the entrance to the drugstore, holding a brown bag overflowing with black licorice. Good. Solomon shoveled a surprising amount of licorice into his mouth. Thank you. 
Meg cut her hands on the glass to peek inside. Opened the door and they all squeezed in. Luca cracked his knuckles and entered the letters into the keypad. The inside of the phone booth dropped loose from its shell. Without even the space to panic, they closed their eyes held their breath, and accepted their fate. Suddenly, the chaotic descent slowed to an effortless landing. It was unclear where they ended up, but at least it was solid ground. Ah. The air was stagnant and smelled vaguely of chlorine. Field of blinking buttons. 
Martins. Mm. Is Moe yet? Fantastic. Shit, indeed. Joseph waited for a moment in silence. Mm. He gestured toward the strange tubes. Nuncreed let out a growl of a sigh. shook his head wistfully. Uh. Nuncree took a menacing step towards the children. began to laugh. Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Nuncreed grabbed Luca by the shoulders. His eyes were frantic. She caused she caused all the the freezes in every single timeline. <laughs> Chapter Eight The Cold Hard Truth. Oh, I'm finally in the Beck leapt up, allowing the suction to yank her into the dark. Dimness eclipsed around her like the shutter of a camera, as she seemed to cover great distance in mere moments. Her only points of reference were glints of upcoming turns, which approached with frightening speed, only to carry her gracefully along. She heard the tinny, distant echoes of Rollo's glee. <laughs> Once she stopped fighting against it, the ride was impossibly smooth. Then, all of a sudden, as if minutes had passed in an instant, light blazed into view. A burst of wintry air snuffed across her face as she was flung out into the cold. Oh, jeez. As 
they rounded the corner to the frozen town square. They spotted oh, Mr. Geez. Nunnery inching cautiously toward a pit at its center. Jeez. Oh, he held his arms out gingerly, as if approaching a beast in the wild. Okay, there we go. Upon closing the distance, Luca recognized what Nuncree was after. Graham stood confidently at the edge, one arm outstretched over the abyss. Nearby, a wheelbarrow had been emptied out. She held a lit torch, which flickered <sighs> in the bitter wind. Oh shit, I was wondering. I was wondering if that was gonna be a bomb that'd be dropped. <clears throat> Mr. Nuncreen winced with anguish. His voice hardened. Mm -hmm. They both now yelled, not to each other, but at fate itself. Hmm. Getting dramatic. Peace with long held burdens. Getting real dramatic. The wind howled with encouragement. sleeping. Each night, his mother would sit at the foot of his bed and hum a gentle melody. It was the only thing that could calm his mind. The only thing that, however briefly, could make it all seem okay. That melody pervaded every memory Luca had of his mother. Mm. Shivering in the raw snow, he began to hum it out loud. Where is his mother? loss they shared together 
She let the torch fall to the snow and sizzle out. A few steps toward Luca was all she could bear before dropping to the snow herself. <laughs> Through a flood of tears, she began to hum along. Grand. Smaller, older, changed. <gasps> Luca sprinted as fast as he could toward his mother. What happened to her? They held each other close, and the cold retreated from their bodies. So confused right now. with pity. He looked small. Joseph stared into the snow as if searching it for answers. Ooh. 
Ooh, I hope they explain what happened to his mom. Jeez. That's crazy. Hmm. Chapter 9. The devil you know. Seven months ago. Eleanor Van Horn crept down the maze of sterile hallways under perennial harvest. I asked, and I shall receive. She stopped in front of the large steel door marked Deep Engineering. No turning back now. She raised a trembling hand. The stolen key card worked as promised, and the door buzzed open with mechanical efficiency. She was immediately hit with the smell of disinfectant. It was some sort of laboratory. In one corner was a desk covered in papers. Across the room stood a tall metal pod with hoses protruding from its base. She rushed to the desk and began shifting through the piles of papers. They were experiment reports on something called Tempus Liquimen. There were dozens of them. Every one stamped, failed. Eleanor heard the sharp echo of footsteps approaching. She was out of time. Her eyes scanned the room. Eventually landing on the strange pod. Oh no. Muttering a curse under her breath, she dashed over and dove inside. <laughs> Wait, what? Mr. Kerr addressed the crowd with a sarcastic tone. Whispers filtered through the crowd. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is Solomon? Is torment dragged on Joseph Nuncrete's face?
<laughs> he paused for a moment, plucking a piece of fuzz from his sweater and discarding it to the ground. <laughs> Solomon's got to be the dad, right? Yep. His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching. <laughs> a hushed horror gripped the crowd. Damn. This is a story about change. Damn. Sharper examined his new hands. They don't quite really. Sharper choked out a crude squawk of a laugh. Frustrated grumbles sprinkled through the crowd. No, okay. Oh, 
Sharper addressed the crowd with indignant pride. He'd planned this moment for so long that now, at the deed's fruition, it almost felt frivolous. flourished a preposterously elaborate bow. Sharper coughed up one final laugh and cracked his knuckles. Hmm. And so, Sharper set about remaking the town in his own image. The fertilizer factory soon reopened for business. Sales rose steadily as more and more farmers across the countryside began to swear by its miraculous properties. Beacon Pines became famous. <sighs> A secretive town that, for the right price, shared its gifts with all. 
Gifts that became more and more necessary in a world where winters grew longer and longer. The end. Dang. This is wrong, but things are becoming clearer now. You can feel it, right? We can't let Sharper win. He might just be the key to this whole thing. Let's see. No. <clears throat> Mm -mm. Well, I think that is good for tonight. I am beat. I have to play Santa here in a little bit for the little one. But I am glad that you came to hang out with me just for a little bit. I know it's a short stream, but I really thank you. And I hope you have a good holiday tomorrow. And that you get everything that you wish for. And, um... It's just a good time with your family. So I'll see you all later. Y'all guys have a good one. Bye.